All righty. Good morning. Good to see you on the bright sunny morning. And all right. Well, let's see. This young couple was very much in love and getting married in church. The wife was very nervous about the big occasion. And so the preacher chose one verse he felt would be a great encouragement to them. The verse is 1 John 4, 18, which says, There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. But not so wisely, the pastor asked the best man to read it and uh, read it out and to say that they thought it, that he thought it would be a very encouraging verse for the young couple. However, the best man was not a regular churchgoer, and he did not know the difference between 1 John and the Gospel of John. And so he stood up and read the Gospel of John 4 and verse 18, which says, And you have five husbands, and the one that you now have is not your husband. <laughs> Whoa. Moral of the story, don't have someone else read the scripture, amen? An electrician did not get home until 2 a.m. His wife asked, why are you insulate? He replied, what is it to you? I'm ohm, aren't I? Don't be so negative. She said, I'm shocked at your response. He said, I suppose I'm grounded now. You got to be sharp to catch all those. Woman talking to her fiance, well, would you like to have children one day? Fiance, yes, but no longer than that. <laughs> oh, boy. I went into the store this week and I asked to see, I asked the salesperson to see a pair of loafers. She brought down the general manager and the accountant. <laughs> oh. I went to the doctor this morning. He said, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. I was hoping you would tell me. <laughs> I got a guy, Speedway. He told me the other day, I'm, I'm checking out, you know, and he goes, well, you know, my dad always told me. And I said, no, what did your dad always tell you? He says, I don't know. I was hoping you'd tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that when I thought of that joke. I thought, boy, that guy must know that one. A large oil company, did you see this in the news this week? A large oil company has announced they're going to be producing fuel from insect urine. You didn't see that? It's called BP. <laughs> That's bad, isn't it? That's bad. I've just been accused of being a plagiarist. Their words, not mine. Get it? Uh, this guy said, I can give you three Motown puns. Four tops. You know Motown, right, Joe? Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, let's see. I just called the paranoia hotline, and they answered and asked, how did you get this number? All right. A young blonde called out, Mayday, Mayday. My pilot has had a heart attack and has passed out, and I don't know how to fly a plane. She hears a voice over the radio saying, This is air traffic control, and I hear you loud and clear. Stay calm, and I'll talk you through this and get you back on the ground. Everything will be fine. Now, what is your height and position? The blonde replies, I'm five foot four, and I'm in the pilot seat. <laughs> there was a long pause on the radio, and then the voice said, now repeat after me, our Father, which art in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it, all right. Well, let's hear from you this morning, all right. And uh, we've been uh, praying for Serena Sanders. 
Mike and Serena. She had the brain cancer and they had got it all, they, they thought. And then here, I don't know, maybe a month ago, she passed out and they went in and ran tests. They couldn't find anything. Well, they went to the James Cancer this week, uh, got a second opinion and the cancer's back in her, in her brain. And they have surgery scheduled the 29th of this month. And so it's uh, pretty devastating news for them. Uh, uh, Andy had talked to Mike, I think, for the service this morning. I wanted you to know that that's what they're dealing with. They just need, if they ever need a church family, they need one now and uh, need our encouragement. And I just, I wanted you to know, I didn't want anybody to go up and say, boy, it's great. There's no cancer, you know, because it is, it is back. And uh, they're trying to, you know, when you get news like that, it's a blow. And then you have to try to absorb it a little bit, and they're still in that stage. So prayerfully, they'll come and uh, just love on them a lot and uh, let them know we're praying for them and we're here for them to help them get through it. Okay? All right? Anybody else? Just put your hand up. These fellows will run to you or walk rapidly. All right, Carol? I have a praise. Uh, I was going home from Bridges. Uh, Thursday night, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> there was a nasty wreck on Al Uh <clears throat> Two cars was totaled, and one car was, and nobody was hurt. <clears throat> Praise God. Uh, the one car, I was sitting there, <clears throat> and the one car was rolling at me, uh, and it hit my car, but it didn't do no damage, and. Wow. Uh, I'm all right also. So uh, I want to praise God for his yeah. protection. Amen. 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 Yeah, you've been a little bit earlier. It might have been a different story. Okay, Jeanette? Um, I've seen the in chronologist on yes. Wednesday, and um, I have to live with this for the rest of my life. But um, he gave me a, a thing that I'll wear for the rest of my life that will let me know when my sugar drops and then I'm to eat. Um, and so I'll, before it drops to the 40s, you yeah. know, when it drops in the 70s, then you know I'll to get eat something. And, yeah. and it'll bring it back up. So praise the Lord for that. Okay. Um, it's not curable, but that's okay. Yeah. I can live with that. Amen. So I'm just praising Amen. the Lord. Still looking for a house up north. Um, still, our houses are not ready, the lake house or... Um, our central house are definitely not ready to be sold yet. Right. Um, so if you could keep us in prayer okay. for wisdom on what to do and how to do it um, to get those. We have to sell the lake house first before we can even find a house up north. Anthony uh, already closed on their house. Um, I get the keys the 1st of May. They'll be here the 4th or the 5th of July because Jess can't leave until the end of June. Okay. And then they're driving back and doing a little vacation. Sure. Um, so I'm okay. excited for them. Yeah. They had an offer on their house and then they couldn't get the fundings so they're still looking for someone to buy their house. Oh, okay. All um, right. Need to pray for their house to yes, sell out Yes, pray for their house to sell high. <laughs> we're yeah. hoping sure okay <laughs> thank you yeah you bet all right where are we over here abigail um pray for my uncle dan and aunt steph um steph's dad passed away last night oh. um, so just pray for the family sure will all right dave paxton Yes, I'd just like to thank the Lord for saving my soul and taking care of me. And, uh, well, I looked at a trailer yesterday, and then we went out and looked at it, and uh, it seems like that uh, God's answering prayers because there's some things in the background that I'd rather not talk about, but there's some things working, and we'll possibly, we have a, we have a promise of the down payment, and we have, uh, so we're going to try to get it, and it's right where we need to be close to both of our works and it's in very good shape and I've met some of the neighbors and they're all old people 
old salty people and they don't <laughs> so it's a nice little so they're place. all your age is that what you're saying yeah oh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah your age too pastor <laughs> wait a minute what it's a young but, community but the lord is just good and we're just uh we're just praying that the lord will let everything work out the way it's supposed to and if this is the one that we're supposed amen. to have that that'll be it amen yes ma'am debbie um, my uncle Gary went to see the surgeon this week that did his original surgery and got a very, very good report. Oh, good. Uh, they released him to drive, and um, they're working to get him out of the rehab, and he has a target date for a week from this Wednesday, the 17th, to be released from the rehab. They've already given him freedom to drive, and they just he was on high blood pressure medication before this so since his blood pressure had been dropping so low they just took him off all that medication and now his blood pressure is regulated again so oh, he's doing very well great so, good that's good news wonderful all right very good where are we jan yeah um we found that megan's service yes is celebration of life will be Friday, um, we're going to receive friends from 12.30 to 2, and the service is at 2. It's at North Columbus Baptist Church, but okay. Pastor Nip is going to be doing the service. All right. So yeah, that's this Friday, the 12th. Yeah. Uh, 12.30 to 2 for calling or viewing, and then 2 o'clock service, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. North Columbus Baptist Church. Melissa. Um, my dad um, had the heart catheterization this week, and they found, they found four blockages. So yeah. he's going to have to have surgery sometime in May. Yes. Pray for that, too. I know Mike is wanting to make sure he has a good. If you have a who you think is the best cardiologist in Columbus, then uh, let us know who that is. He'd like to get the best there is. And, uh, and uh, so pray for Mike Smith, all right? That's Melissa's daddy. Okay, Shirley? I just uh, want to praise the Lord that I'm here. Amen. And I, he, he's just so awesome. And he worked so many things in my life. And, and I just, just pray for me that, that I'm willing and I want to be willing to do anything that he especially in the church i love this church Amen. and if there's anything that i can do you know i mean i don't get around very well because i don't i don't drive mm -hmm. but i always have to depend on other people to take me but uh whatever i can do you know i want willing to do it and still uh, pray for my family i just yes uh they just break my heart when when they come around. I love them dearly when they come around, but I don't like the way they talk. Yeah. And uh, just, and Annie was telling me that um, Jim's um, granddaughter just had a little girl and her, his, uh, her boyfriend's uh, family, uh, they're, I don't think they're from the United States, but they're going to be baptizing the baby okay. a, in a Catholic church. And um, um, just ha uh, pray that the Lord will give me the courage and uh, the strength to witness to them. Amen. That they need Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the answer to all of our That's problems. Right. Amen. If only the United States would. Yeah, realize that. Recognize that, that. Mm -hmm. yes. That's good, Shirley. Thank you. All right. Heather Joy? Um, if you continue to pray for Roger Rice, he's one of my veterans. Um, I know he's been on the prayer list for a while, but the last week his breathing has really decreased, and he's having a lot of issues with it, and he's trying to get to the doctors, but then when he's scheduled, he can't get there because mm -hmm. he's too weak to go. Mm. So um, I'm just I'm still trying to encourage him all the time to keep his appointments, okay. but and even tried to see if I could get him a ride with the veteran, you know, with the VA mm -hmm. and stuff. But he's not, you know, real keen on 
because of his mobility. He has a walker and yeah. he's unsteady in his feet and okay and everything. And we'll keep praying for Roger Rice. Yeah, and then okay. I still need transportation to get to work and keep my housing. Okay. Thank you. All right, Heather for transportation. All right. Hey, Marie, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be back. And just keep me in your prayers because these allergies has really bothered me this year. And uh, he changed my allergy pill. And uh, I'm supposed to start the therapy tomorrow. I was supposed to start last week, but I got sick. So first tomorrow will be my first day. Okay. And I hope it does some good because I got to go from about twice a week and then they're going to see if I can do more therapy after that if my insurance covers it. So, okay. So just All keep right. me, and keep my kids in your, my Anita and my son John, in your prayers that they get back into church. All right. Thank you. We'll do it. Destin, uh, yeah, finish us up. Uh, <laughs> I want to keep my sister in prayer. You know, the Lord gave me two interesting dreams that she passed away, so I was like, well, this is urgent. So the Lord just put it on my heart to uh, go drive up to her, witness to her. And, you know, I got to uh, tell her, like, you need to choose to whom this day who you will serve because she knows the Lord. And I was able to pray over her. She was in an abusive relationship. And the next day, the boyfriend ended up leaving, getting out the house. And then she called me and said she want to come to church. I want to free up her schedule and everything. So just pray that the Lord frees up her schedule. Amen. So she come to church. She's reading the Word. She's starting to pray. So. Just to pray that God continues to work on her and thank God for being for me being obedient. That's great. What's your sister's name? Journey. Journey? Yep. Okay. That's wonderful. All right, fellas, thank you. Bobby, you want to get one? Yeah. Um, pray for my butter, cause my butter fall on some ice and stuff. You don't know if gonna get out for rich or not. People begin up um, go to the doctor on Friday. Okay, your brother? Yeah, my butter. He were my lost, lost butter one time. Okay. Where I didn't know where they were. Okay. And Friday? Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll do that, Bobby. Thank you. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate your help this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll go to Jericho. All right? Father in heaven, we bow before you this morning now. Thank you for another Lord's Day you've given to us. And Lord, as we've taken the time this morning, as usually do, to share blessings and, and often just share the, the prayer requests, Lord, the things we, we need prayer. We want uh, to lift up these needs to you because you're the God who hears and answers prayer. Lord, we uh, lift the needs up to you this morning. There's physical needs that are present here that uh, we lift up to you. You're the great physician. We know, Lord, that you have the ability and the power to heal and, Lord, we would ask you to put your healing touch upon these situations that are here today and others uh, need wisdom and decisions that are being made and uh, as far as future and uh, homes to sell or homes in need or car transportation needs. Lord, we, we trust for your provision in these areas. Lord, we know that you do all things well. And so, Father, we lift these requests up to you today and ask you to, to work and show yourself strong on our behalf as our God, please. And, Lord, we're asking your blessing upon our time together here as we in our class and the other classes, they're meeting now throughout the buildings. We remember to pray for our Spanish church today and you bless Pastor Avilas and uh, those who minister there today. Give them a good Lord's Day and we pray that visitors will come and souls will be saved and pray that you'll meet with us now in our class and open our eyes that we grow wondrous things out of your law this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go to Joshua chapter 6. <clears throat> Familiar story if you've been in church uh, very much, and particularly as a younger person through Sunday school, it would be Joshua and the Battle of Jericho, all right? And um, the Israelites have crossed the Jordan River. And uh, they're into the promised land, and now the battles will begin. And the very first big battle they face is Jericho. Uh, Jericho, you hardly can mention Jericho without mentioning the walls of Jericho, all right? And uh, that's what it was known for. And, and notice it's plural, not the wall of Jericho, the walls 
of Jericho. There was more than just one wall that surrounded the city. They say that wall went around about 12 feet tall, and then there would be an embankment going up to a second wall that went around. And uh, people, there were walls were connected by timbers, and people lived in between those walls. Some lived on top of the wall as well. And uh, the, the outer wall was about six feet wide, but the inner wall uh, was even wider than that. And that's probably where Rahab lived. Um, but you understand, so you, when you're talking about the walls falling down, that's one thing. But when you have walls that are 12 to 15 feet tall, bricks, stone in some cases, and they fall down, they didn't just fall down, they fell down flat so they could move right in and take the city. It was, you can imagine as they finally go into the promised land and they see this huge fortress city, it looked insurmountable. It looked like this is impossible. Uh, and that's what they wanted you to believe. That's how they, that's why they built that kind of uh, defense system around their city. And so they knew that there's just no way Humanly speaking, they're going to conquer this city. Let's see what God tells them to do. Chapter 6. Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets, and the re-reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout, then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, went on continually, and the armed men went before them. But the re-reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned to the camp, so they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day, encompassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent." And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But the sil all the silver and gold and the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men and women, young and old, ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. And we'll stop there for now, and we'll get your paper filled in this morning. Number one is this, there's no battle impossible with God. 
There's no battle impossible with God. Notice verse 1. It said the city, Jericho, was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. So humanly, it looked impossible for Israel to be able to conquer this city. And I'm sure it looked even more impossible when they, Joshua told them what the plan was. <laughs> We're going to walk around once a day and then stop. And it's about, the best I could tell from research, about a half mile walk around it. And uh, so it would take maybe a half hour, maybe at the most one hour with all the people that had to march. And uh, so you understand about an hour a day until the seventh day. Then they would march around it seven times. So that would take a while. And then they went in and took the city. So it didn't look too promising for them, I'm sure. But the Bible reminds us nothing is impossible with God. God doesn't know that something's impossible. Genesis 18, 14. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And of course, what's the answer? No. I'm not sure hard is in God's vocabulary. All right. Number, Numbers eleven twenty three. Is the Lord's hand wax short has God has God gotten weak in his old age we talked about old age <laughs> uh, no uh, the Lord doesn't wax short it hasn't waxed weak Jeremiah thirty two seventeen. there is nothing too hard for thee there's nothing too hard for God again Mark 9 and verse 23 in the New Testament all things are possible to him that believeth you believe that God can do it, and God can do it. For Mark 10, 27, For with God, all things are possible. I think that's the state motto of Ohio, if I remember right. Uh, with God, all things are possible. And so, there's no battle impossible with God. Number two, however, here's the, here's the criteria. God's methods must be used. God's methods must be used. They were to march around the city, one time a day for how many days? Six days. And then how many times on the seventh day? Seven times on the seventh day. Seven priests were to go before the ark with seven trumpets of ram's horns. And armed men were going before the priest. And if you recall, verse number 10, the people were to say nothing during this time. That's how I knew they weren't Baptist. Okay? They weren't allowed to say a word. Okay? Because I'm sure if, you're, if they're just normal people, you know what they're saying? This is stupid. What are we doing this for? Huh? Look at those guys up there on the wall. They're laughing at us. Huh? I'm sure there would have been some kind of little bit of murmuring or complaining about, well, we look silly, don't we? And uh, so he said, no, nobody's going to say anything until the seventh time. After the seventh time, on the seventh day, then he said every, all the people were to do what? Shout, shout, and then let her rip, okay? And uh, after shouting with a great shout, the walls were to come tumbling down. Now, obviously, this is no ordinary method, okay? But it was God's method. His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. This was not a way anybody else would have thought of. But it's what God thought of. And it was a way where he'd get the glory. Because if God gives the victory, it will be by his methods. Number three, Joshua led the people in a seven-day job. He led the people in a seven-day job. I think it's telling us something here that victory for God must be won the entire seven days. You're not winning victory for God simply by being in church on Sunday. You're not going to win victory for God simply by being in church on Sunday. It's not a one-day thing. And the world, the world doesn't mind if you're sitting in church on Sunday. Just don't bring it out with you Monday through Saturday. Okay? But when, you know, you understand, we don't just have Christ as our Savior. The Bible says when Christ who is our life. Uh, we're with Jesus every day. He's with us at all times. And we're with Him at all times. 
And so we carry him everywhere we go. This Christianity thing isn't a Sunday thing. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing. It's, it's all the time. And so uh, we, we don't just do it by what we do on Sunday. We, do, we must do every day what we do a lot of on Sunday. <laughs> Study the Bible. Read the Bible. Pray together. Sing. Witness. All these things that go on on a Sunday... But they can go on on a Monday too. Just you and God. Just smaller audience. Smaller crowd. But God's there. God's with you in your closet on Monday and Tuesday as much as He is here on Sunday. Amen. And He wants an audience with you. And, and so you do those things every single day of the week. It's not just what you do on Sunday. Uh, it was a seven day job. Now there was number four. There was one day of the seven on which they did more than on the other days. I think there's one day a week that is to be given entirely to God. Now, you understand, for in, in Israel day, they had one day that was given to God for rest, and they, weren't, they had very strict rules of what they could and couldn't do. That was called the Sabbath day. That's... That was the seventh day. That was Saturday. The work, you know, we always look at Monday as the first day of the week. It isn't. Today's the first day of the week. The week starts on Sunday. If the world, if the world has their ways, where do they put Sunday? It's the week end. It's the last day of the week. And they start their week on Monday. But we don't start it. We start our work on Sunday. Why are you here on Sunday morning? Because one of the ways you're here is you're saying, I want to put God first. God belongs in first place. The only place God deserves in our life is first place. And so we want to start our brand new week with God being first. And so we meet on the first day of the week. The early church began to do that in celebration of what we did last week, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now we meet. Well, Paul, when he instructed the church at Corinth, he said, it's upon the first day of the week you lay by him in store. You have, each one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him. There be no gatherings when I come. When they gather together, it was the first day of the week. When Paul was preaching and the fellow fell out of the balcony, you know, the second story, and fell down dead, that was on a Sunday evening he was preaching. And he preached till midnight. And uh, that's why the fellow had a hard time staying awake, I guess. And uh, down he went. But again, the point is they're meeting on Sunday. Okay? They were always meeting on the first day of the week. Sunday is not... Uh, the, a, a Sabbath day, okay? It's not the day of rest. It's not just the day where it's not. It didn't replace the Sabbath. It it is. It's a, it's the first day of the week. It's called the Lord's Day. It's a day we dedicate to God. <clears throat> it's it's the first day of the week, and it's a day for God and for His service. To where this is the day we serve the Lord. Not not, not Sunday isn't just another pleasure day for the Christian. It's become that way in the world. It wasn't always that way, even in the world. Some of you are in, in our, uh, uh, according to Dave Paxton, our old age bracket. bracket um, you understand? I played, I played, what would you call secular sports growing up, but we never played Sunday. They, that, was, that was taboo. That was the world. They just knew you don't touch Sundays. Well, now that's gone by the wayside, as many of you know. Uh, we have, I was up at my daughter's house and they have some friends over for Micah's birthday and they're, they have two girls that play on Jackson High School girls basketball team and their dad's talking how it's seven days a week. Seven days a week. Every Sunday from 5 to 6.30 is a, is a is shoot around practice at the gym. Public high school. It's every Sunday. Uh, I know what I know my dad's in heaven, but I know what he would have said. <laughs> he'd, have, he'd have said, you won't be there. You won't be there. And, uh, and I wouldn't have been. I've uh, been in church. And uh, it's, just, uh, it's just amazing how things have changed. And now it's just another day. Many of you know this. Uh, many of you sometimes you have unsafe family members, as Shirley was talking about. And some of you have those. And, you know, when they want to schedule birthday parties and all kinds of get-togethers, they want to do it on Sunday. You know why? They don't want to give their Saturday up. 
And yet when you say, oh, I don't want to give my Sunday up, well, then they think you're crazy and you're weird. Well, no, we're not going to give our pleasure up, but you give, give God up for a day, would you? And you say, no, I can't do that. No, Sunday is God's day. Couldn't we give him one? Couldn't we, couldn't we put him first and make Sunday the Lord's day? And, and make it a day where you, you consecrate yourself to him. And, and, and it's in service for the Lord, all right? And so they, they, they set aside that day for him. Now, number five, the glory of God was out in front. Because out in front was the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was just a piece of furniture uh, upon which rested the glory of God and really represented the presence of God. Now, it's not the ark like Noah built. It was just, it's really not much bigger than the width of this pulpit and, and about the breadth. It wasn't that, that big of a thing. Uh, but it represented the presence of God to Israel. Uh, you can read about it later on when the Philistines get it and some other people get it and the, the havoc that it caused in their land. And they didn't want any more. They wanted to send it back to, to Israel. And uh, it, it, it led the way. It always was out in front. And they followed it. And uh, it was the priest and the ark that followed the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night when they left Egypt. And so that's the, that's the way of God. That's the will of God. And listen, victory is never won unless you stay in the will of God and follow his leadership. So the ark of the Lord, verse 11, compassed the city going about it once and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp in that case it doesn't say the people but they were talking about the ark of the covenant that circled the city and God was letting them know my glory out in front I'm going to accomplish this you know when when you march around a place and one time a day six days seven times on seventh day you yell real loud and all these massive walls come down and they come down flat where you can walk right into the city I, I would imagine there were many in the city who just dropped over dead of a heart attack. They, they never would have th imagined something like this happening. And uh, Israel goes right in and takes the city. Listen, that, no one could take credit for that. You know, nobody in the army could say, yeah, I think it was my shout that did the job. No, no I'd say, man, that, this is amazing. Look what God did. Look what God did. And that's the purpose. Everything that's out in front of anything we do ought to be for the glory of God. To, make, to put God in the spotlight. Not us in the spotlight. Put God in the spotlight. Okay? Make sure that He, that's what it means to give God the glory. Give God the credit. Give God the spotlight. We're, we're nothing. He's everything. And, and He gets the glory. Not us. Okay? And so... We want to follow the will of God and do the will of God and follow his leadership. Number six, the Christian should not get attached to worldly things. The people, if you remember from verse 17, uh, 18, 19, they were to take nothing from the land of Jericho, from the city of Jericho. Uh, it was the accursed thing. In fact, everything, he said, all the silver, the gold, the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto who class the Lord they're to go to God they shall come into the treasury of the Lord so all that wealth in the land was to go to God again they're going into the promised land there's other battles they're going to fight but the first fruits the first bit of wealth that they come across who's it belong to belongs to God the first fruits of all our increase belong to God now when you know you know we'll get into it next week with AI and they lost at AI because Achan decided he took some of that didn't he why was God so upset with Achan taking little gold and, and, and a wedge of gold and a change of garment and such because that belonged to God Achan's, Achan's real sin was he stole from God he took what belonged to God. When we don't give God what belongs to Him, God takes that seriously. 
And so we have to remember everything but goes to God. That was the first fruits or the tithe, if you will, uh, of the Israelites to God. All right. And then let's go to number seven. And we see the people followed Joshua's leadership. They followed Joshua's leadership. They had promised, remember, when we talked about the equipping of Joshua and the commissioning of Joshua uh, back in chapter 1, all that God commanded Moses, you know, we'll follow you just like we did Moses. <clears throat> Whatever you, you, just as we obeyed him, we'll obey you. And uh, they've done that. Now they're doing, they did exactly as Joshua told them to do. One time, come back, they did it. One time come back, they did it. Don't say a word. Apparently, they did that. Uh, everything they, that he told them, they followed and they obeyed. And then, of course, God gave the victory. And listen, God gives each of us leaders that were to follow. Everybody has leaders in their life. And you ought to follow those leaders. Does that mean the leaders are perfect? No. No. Uh, children... Obey your parents in the Lord, for they're always right. No, that's not what it says, is it? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It doesn't say they're always right. And any parent here is honest would say, yeah, we make our share of mistakes too. But it's still right for a child to obey. When you're working a job and you're working under someone, you do what they ask you to do. He's your employer. He's your leader. And you obey them. Okay? And uh, no matter what area you're in, you obey them. A student ought to obey the teacher. Okay? And you ought to follow their example and follow their leader. Uh, who do they think they are? they think they're God? No. But they're leader. And we ought to want to follow what they say. Paul said this. Paul would say, be ye followers of me, even as I follow Christ. Okay, it evolved. I think what he's saying is, now, when I don't follow Christ, you're under no obligation to follow me. You understand? Uh, our ultimate authority, and that's what, that's what it is when it comes to government. Then Romans 13 says we obey the powers that are above us, the powers that are ordained of God. But we have to remember the highest power of all is God himself. So we obey the laws of the land as long as they don't conflict with God's law. And you obey the law of any leader in your life until they conflict with God's law. And then you must obey God. And that's why when the apostles were arrested there in Acts and, and uh, for preaching and teaching Christ, remember when they called him before the council and Peter said, well, we ought to obey God rather than man. You're telling us we can't do this. The, the problem we've got is Jesus told us to do this. He told us to go and to be witnesses unto him. He told us to go preach the gospel to every creature. And so we have to obey God rather than man. And that's right. So we want to follow leaders and follow leadership as they follow Christ. And God blesses that. God honors that. And they did so here in the battle of Jericho. Now, just let me point out to this in the minute or so we have left. You know, they spared Rahab had hid the spies and then sent them out. So uh, they'd go out another way, and they promised that they would spare her house. And her, she lived on the wall. And so it, it's really fascinating to me, I think, to see this someday. Maybe, maybe we'll get to see some of these visuals when we get to heaven. I don't know. You know, that, see, all these walls fall down flat, but there's Rahab's house sitting there still. You know, that'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? And uh, they go into Rahab's house, and, and they're going to save everybody who's in her house. Remember now, when I say the name Rahab, what do you think of? Rahab, the harlot. But now listen to this. Look at verse 21. The young, I mean 23. Verse 23. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein and only the silver, the gold, the vessels, the brass and iron they put in the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day. All right? So here, here she is. Dad, mom, family members, relatives, 
They're all packed at her house, man. I always thought, what a contrast between her and Lot. Lot had the same opportunity. He knew judgment was coming. And Abraham got down to where there were just ten. I think there were ten in Lot's family. I really do. If he'd have just, I think he figured, well, Lot will at least get his family in there. But he couldn't do that. But boy, Rahab sure did. What a, what a great witness she was. And they believed her. They all got in. And then they were all spared. It's a, it's a great story. Just thought I'd make sure we point that out here when we get, before we leave Jericho and go to Ai, all right? And we'll look for Ai next Sunday morning. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for our time. Again, this familiar story, but Lord, one that is still amazing to us, the conquering of Jericho. Lord, what a great victory you brought that day. And Lord, showing us that there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing that's impossible with you. And so, Lord, I pray that no matter what our problem is, no matter what uh, formidable obstacle we feel like we're facing, help us to know there's nothing too hard for our God, that with God, all things are possible. Bless our service to follow now this morning. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we've got 1017. We'll start the morning service in about 13 minutes. You're dismissed till then.